When I grew up, the the pinnacle of a writer's career, the pinnacle of a musician's career, the pinnacle of an artist's career at that time was to be to be uh, profiled in a New Yorker and have a caricature done. Now they did a great caricature. I mean, I look like a gnome. I actually don't look like that, but I love the caricature. And I have many copies of the uh, cartoon on my walls in various houses. So without any further ado, let's listen to the podcast on how this radio show is different than anyone else's right now on The Savage Nation. His show, The Savage Nation, reaches more than 8 million listeners each week. We so-called conservatives are actually the liberals of America. And the so-called liberals are the actual fascists of America. Savage's disdain for the left is savage. One of his many books is called Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. But listeners to his show get a lot more than politics, as Kella Fasana tells us in his profile this week. Welcome back, Kay. Thanks. So the election of Barack Obama has put conservatives back in the opposition, and that has re-energized talk radio. Is that what got you interested in doing this piece? And why did you pick Michael Savage, of all the conservative talk show hosts? That's part of what got me interested in doing this piece. I I'd heard him over the years and found myself listening to him a bunch last year during the election. And he was interesting partly because he seemed to be so off-message. Oh, I know what you're, you're, you're expecting, but you're not going to get it from me. You'll have to go to one of the... Uh, other talk shows to get uh, Obama's a Marxist and McCain is a war hero. If that's what you want from now until November, you're in the wrong uh, you're on the wrong dial position. Savage, despite being identified as a conservative talk show host, didn't really seem to like McCain that much. Mm -hmm. Definitely hated Obama. Didn't really like Bush. So he was reacting really differently than the other conservative hosts. Well, you know, most of the other conservative hosts, no matter what the problems they might have had with McCain, mm -hmm. were they certainly supported him. Right. And Savage really didn't. But Savage has always been a really kind of unusual, weird guy. His mm -hmm. radio show isn't like anyone else's radio show. Right. So he talks a lot less about politics than a lot of other talk show hosts. Well, he, he's, he's a lot less single-minded. He has this weird cluster of of interests. He's mm -hmm. interested in herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. He's interested in animals. He loves food. He loves to tell stories about, you know, New York in the in the fifties and sixties. And he loves to talk about his life in a really unusual way. He has this kind of melancholy, depressive streak. And, mm -hmm. and so the takeaway isn't necessarily, you know, we're gonna rally the troops and we're gonna get this done politically. The takeaway is often I'm probably gonna go home and drink tonight. And <laughs> and, and and that makes him a really interesting, really compelling character. <laughs> when when the New Yorker comes up on a show like Savage's or Russia's, it's generally not in glowing terms. No. Michael Savage, is, my guess, not a longtime subscriber to the magazine. Well, he he is a longtime oh, reader. He is. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. He, he grew up in New York, and he he, he's, he has said he, he did grow up reading. How he's, hard was it to get him to talk to you, and how did you go about that? Well, the. Uh, Basically, I, I sent a bunch of emails to his people and finally got an email back from him. He mm -hmm. writes, uh, all the emails I've ever gotten from him, I think, have been in all caps. <laughs> and, and, uh -huh. and he was kind of like, what do you want? <laughs> and so I kind of explained to him that I wanted to write a story about him, that I listened to his show, that I enjoyed his show. I think every email I wrote him, he read on the air. Wow. And so it was this weird kind of three-way conversation where I'd write him again in response to the discussion that I'd heard on the air. Uh, so uh -huh. it, it, it was pretty pretty strange. Uh, I think we have a clip of him describing one of the emails he sent back to me after I had written him asking him to please talk to me. So I sent him this note and I said, the cartoon that goes with the story, will it show me in the Gestapo or an SA uniform? Surely you don't believe I don't know what you want to try to make of me. Why must everyone in journalism be so obvious? Why must all of you in the extreme media paint everyone you, you disagree with as demonic? No, no, in fact, when I read your piece, I didn't think he came off as demonic at all. When I actually, when I actually finally kind of convinced him that, you know, we should sit down and talk and it wasn't going to destroy his career, you know, it was this kind of surreal thing because we had a, you know, we had a great time and, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we had some beers and we, we sat on his porch and his, mm -hmm. he's a great host mm -hmm. and he, he was fun to talk to. I'd like to think he enjoyed the conversation and, uh, I think there's something about him that, some part of him that thought it was really funny on the radio the next day after the interview one of the he one of the callers asked wh how it went right. and he described me as looking a little bit like obama which, <laughs> which coming from him i think was a deeply twisted kind of compliment <laughs> he doesn't like obama he didn't like mccain he doesn't like rush limbaugh um 
What would you describe his politics as? How, how would you boil it down? Hates everything? Or? Well, no, no. He's a, uh, you know, he calls himself a genuine independent conservative. And, mm -hmm. you know, borders, language, and culture is one of his rallying cries. And mm -hmm. so he's, he believes strongly that illegal immigration is hurting America in all sorts of ways. Right. He's, he actually, he worked in a, uh, in a clinic that served gay men in San Francisco in the early mid 1980s, just as the AIDS epidemic was hitting. And, uh, as he tells it, he called for closing down the bathhouses, which got him sort of uh, exiled from this community that he had sort of been part of. Well, liberals who called for that, too, were also really attacked. And yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so he kind of traces his disillusionment with the gay rights movement to that mm -hmm. moment. So he's a very vociferous critic of the gay rights movement. Mm -hmm. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. I hope you enjoyed that flashback to the uh, New Yorker. That wasn't an interview. That was their, their uh, conversation about the interview. As a radio host, they wrote, Michael Savage is a heretic among heretics, as contemptuous of fellow right-wing stars as he is of liberal politics. So it goes a long way that I've been an independent. And I'm very proud of this article. It's from August 3rd, 2009. You can find it online. The cover says, The Real Michael Savage, Kalefa Senna on a shock jock's unexpected side. All right, shock jock, fine. Kevin, KSFO Radio, welcome to the Savage Nation. Kevin, what's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to say, Michael, it's unbelievable that they even gave you the air time to discuss your opinions because, you know, these liberals hate to have any type of facts brought out. I know that, but that's why I even played it on the air, Kevin, because I was trying to make a point, which is that not all of those who disagree with our politics are so locked in their doxies that they can't see uh, around their own uh, biases. You're exactly right, but what you did, you opened that door just a little bit, and and you're so good at that, and 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 you you have such a way of. Um, have you ever heard that, that interview before on my show? Have you ever heard me play play that on the show before, Michael? This is the first time I ever heard it. I just come home from work, and I I uh, turn you on. Uh, three out of the five days that you're on, and it just gives me such a lift that I... Did you did you buy Government Zero yet? Have you gotten to the bookstore? No, not yet. Not yet. You're getting a free one right now. Under the condition that you give it away to a liberal uh, girlfriend this weekend in a bar. Someone who fled Catholic school. <laughs> All right, that's a joke. Come on. Those who have listened to the hour know what I'm talking about. I'll be back next hour for another hour right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Savage Nation, hour number three, another big hour. Here's great news, just came to me from the publisher, the top person. You ready for this? Michael, we're ordering a third printing of Government Zero. Costco just came in with a brand new reorder. We now have 159,000 in print. Now, this is very good news. And I told you, when I started this promotional campaign for my book, remember I said get the first printing while you can, because I guarantee you they're going to be sold out. There may be some first printings available in the stores. You can find it, by the way, if you look. But I told you, I, I generally try to tell you everything I know to be the truth. And you say, well, what's the big deal? First printing, third printing? Well, the book is the same. The difference is that my books tend to become collectibles. Unlike most people who write garbage that you throw away in the, a month that has no value, some of my books are still in print from the 1970s. They cost a fortune. One of my earliest books you can't find for less than $800. I'm not guaranteeing you that this book's going to be worth $800 in 20 years, but it has a value because I write Persian miniatures. That's when Persia was Persia. 
before it became what it is today. But the Persian miniature, I write because I started as a writer, not as a polemicist. Anyway, great news for the audience out there. We're probably going to make some big news with this book, thanks to you. And it'll probably take off on its own at this point. It's achieved what most authors, you know, dream of, which is a book that creates its own momentum. And that's Government Zero. And if you intend to buy one to put on your coffee table for Thanksgiving, I suggest you grab one this weekend. Anyway, I want to play some rock and roll. I want to do the news. I happen to like, uh, which is the one I asked for? Could this be Magic by the Dubs? Let's see if we can, no, Come Go With Me by the Dell Vikings. Let's go really back in time because it's Friday. I love this song. I just love it. 58 Impala. 58 Impala. I mean, the whole thing comes flowing back into your brain, doesn't it? See, if it was Friday and I was that age, I'd be getting ready for a good time tonight. Right now, I'm getting ready to just do nothing. <laughs> In other words, no, I'm going to have dinner. I'm just joking. I will be having a dinner with some important people. And I'll probably drink too much red wine. This has been book week. You know, I called it book hell week yesterday. I was really wiped out from it this morning. I could hardly get out of bed. And I really have a lot of energy, but something hit me. It finally hit me. I'm realizing, you know, there's only so much I can do. I try to believe I can do any amount of things I can't. I mean, I really, with all the shows and the interviews, and I love it. It means I'm alive. I mean, other than this, I'd just be getting, what, going to lunch, having a drink, playing golf. God bless you if that's what you do. I just want to keep working as long as I can. And I'm inspired to try and make a difference. It's that simple. And frankly, with your help, I am making a difference. My ratings came in on all the stations. They're very high. The book is doing well. What more can I ask for right now? Well, how about a nation that I love that came back to me? How about waking up one morning and finding out the entire lot of criminals in Washington were somehow arrested by some magic and they're being let out in handcuffs? How about I wake up one morning and I see that Obama's finally been impeached for what he has done to this country? Yeah, right. Keep dreaming, Mike. Middle of the night, 4 a.m., they pass a budget. They give this guy $80 billion to spread out amongst the senators and congressmen and their wives and husbands. That's all he did with it. What do you think the $80 billion is for? Tell me what it's for. To keep building solar plants in the middle of the desert that produce uh, less than a kilowatt. 855-400-7282. Let's take some calls. Joe on WABC. Go ahead. What's on your mind, Joe? Yes, I want to talk about uh, your New, York, New Yorker article and uh, Lionel Trains. Because I remember a couple of years ago you bought yourself a train set. And Joshua Lionel Cowan, I happen to be of probably the number one collector of Lionel Trains in this country. I have the oldest trains. Well, you share company with him because in 1947 there was an article about Joshua Lionel Com uh, Cohen and his train company, which, by the way, he changed his name uh, to Cohen, C-O-W-E-N, from Cohen, C-O-H-E-N, because he was a Jewish man, and, and at that time in business, it wasn't a good thing to be That's Jewish. Right. You, had to, you had to hide your Jewish identity in, the, in those days because of racism. No one knows that. But what, Lionel's, the Lionel train guy's name was Cohen, not Lionel? Cohen, C O H E N, and around 1910. And I wrote. Uh, no, no, I, I heard the story. But what was your point? Lionel was written up in the New Yorker. Is that what you're saying? There was a profile. You, you are in revered company. Of I know I am. I mean, some of the great jazz artists were were a profile in the New Yorker. Incidentally, they were they were very heavily attacked for writing such a complimentary story about me. They did so because that's what they wanted to write. Party of one, and you know one of the reasons I played it even though it was published in 2009, is because it was just when Obama had been elected and he was just about to be inaugurated that January. That's why that article was published. And many people don't know that I've been on the forefront of being an independent for a very, very long time. At that time, most of the people who declared to be anti-Republican, hey, blah, 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 against Boehner, blah, 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 against Boehner, they were going in the White House. They're marching in there eating dinner with George Bush. Then all of a sudden, they heard how popular I was. All of a sudden, they became independents. Hey, did you buy Government Zero yet? No, not yet, Dr. Savage. So what is all these people love me? They don't buy the book. You're waiting for a freebie, huh? <laughs> well, if you like Lionel... <laughs> well, you're a train collector, so it means that. you're... If you're a train guy, it means you're a little bit on the cheap side. I don't know. There's something about it. I'm joking. Come on. Trains are beautiful. I don't have a train set. When I was a kid, I had an electric train set. I set, almost caught my, set myself on fire. I took the track and stuck it into the socket in the wall. I almost got electrocuted train set no do they may still make train sets that run on electricity or is it considered too dangerous for the child no they still do dr savage 
Because I remember I had an American Flyer train set that puffed smoke. I used to drop a little pellet into the chimney of the 